Hello, thank you for joining me. Say, in this video I'd like to show you how to put in a, a door schedule. And before, of course, before we do a door schedule, we have to put in some tags in the door. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it helps identify the doors. And eventually it makes a nice round package when you put together your architectural plans to make sure that your doors are properly labeled. So when I go to the schedule, they can see what they're referring to. So typically, put in your door tags first. And uh, by the way, this is our film number six in our series on components, constraints, and adding tags. And of course, the tags come to the schedules, and that's going to be our ultimate goal here is to uh, do a door schedule. And then we're going to compare that to our furniture schedule and talk about the differences between the two. So, let's do tags. Tag by category is a good one. We already know that. Go ahead and click an element we want it to tag, and doesn't like our doors or the fact that we don't have a door tag loaded. So this may come up, come up every now and then. Typically the door tags are already loaded, but if you don't have it, let's go to yes. We'll load one. Remember it's under the annotations folder, inside of the architectural folder, and door. Let's drop a tag in there. Now the difference, the big difference between door tags and the furniture tags is that the door tag is automatically a mark. It's going to give you a door number, even though all the doors are going to be the same inside of the, the building, are all going to be 36 inch uh, flush doors with trim. They're all going to be number different, so the carpenter or whoever's going to be installing this door knows that that's door number one, that's going to be door number seven, and so on and so forth. It's going to appear in the schedule that way. That's a type, or that's a mark, whereas with the furniture, it's a type mark. So it's kind of like the type of the, of the furniture is a Corbu chair. All the Corbu chairs are going to get the same number. All the doors are going to get different numbers, consecutive numbers, and we can change those numbers too, but consecutive in regard to the, the order that we put those doors in. I kind of belabored that a little bit, but here's an easy way to do it. And first of all, when we put in our door tags, we actually put these in without leaders. So let's do one more door and I'll show you some of the options regarding that. Tag by category, let's go to another door. We have the ability to put in that tag. Oh, put it in without me even... Uh, asking for it. So let's go back to annotate and do that in one more time. Tag by category. And I think if you hover over there long enough it looks like it uh, selects it, but apparently not. So here's our uh, options. You can make the tag horizontal. We can make it with leader. Uh, attached end or detached end. Free end and quarter inch is what we chose for uh, the Corby chairs. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to have a leader. That's what it looks like with the leader. We're not going to have a leader with the door, so we're just going to put it right there where the door is, right in the middle of the door. And something, if we did a leader, by the way, and we didn't discuss this option we put in our furniture tags, you have the option of making that tag horizontal or vertical. Now, there could be a different uh, orientation. And there is a, there's a difference between the two. There could be a different orientation regarding how your sheet's laid out. The way we have our sheet is we have our title block on this end, but uh, some people actually read their sheets that way. So it all depends on the orientation of, sh of the sheet in regard to how you want your tags to look, and it gives you all sorts of different options for that. So we're going to take that tag. No, we're not. We're trying to select the tag, not the floor, but... Mm. There we go. Let's select that tag. We're going to delete that. Select like this tag, we're going to delete it. And let me show you one more option regarding tags. We've done tag by category and talked about multi-category, but let's do tag all. And if you don't have door tags loaded, by the way, when you get this dialog box, you're going to have to load them. But what this does, uh, the tag all button is actually what it's really called, tag all not tagged. So anything in your uh, drawing view that you're looking at that isn't tagged, will give you, you can have, you have that option of being able to tag everything that's not tagged. So we're going to do our door tags, and all you have to do is go to OK, and it fills in our door tags, to, to, uh, easy for me to say, door tags, in reference to what, how we place that last door tag. So it's all going to put them in the middle of the door without a leader. It's all going to be aligned so it's horizontal rather than vertical, and we're ready to go. One thing to keep in mind about your tags, if you have a situation like this, the tag is kind of in the middle of uh, some object lines. You want to move those out of the way so it doesn't look uh, cluttered. Again, a very well uh, designed drawing. And when one's putting together drawings like this, you want to make sure that it's uh, easily read. That the information associated with that object, like doors here, are relatively close to those doors, but not covering object lines. So when I move this tag out, you notice it's trying to make an alignment, a horizontal alignment to the other tag that I moved, tag number eight, as well as uh, you can see the, the polar tracking in regard to the door, so it's going to stay aligned to the door. That also adds to the neatness of your drawing. 
So in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, not so much about door tags, but in the next round, we'll put together our door schedule and then compare the two schedules we've put uh, together so far and make comparisons to them both. Thanks for joining me.